the countdown, we have the printing error. Now, supposedly there was a lot of difficulties when it came to printing and publishing the first original copies of the book. In fact, there were a lot of printing errors that they caught before they finally made the perfect copy. But somehow, one of these wrongly printed copies ended up on the shelves for sale and a parent unknowingly bought it for their son. Now, what's the big deal with buying a book that may have a little printing error? Like, sure, you could be upset that you spent money on a flawed book, but it's harmless, right? Well, it is said that the error ended up smearing the image of Clifford, leaving him and Emily looking a little disturbing. Apparently, the color got smeared on one of the pages and it made Clifford and Emily look like they were standing in the middle of a bloodbath or a violent murder scene. It terrified the kid and the parent. But of course, this is just a myth to scare the readers. Making our way down the list, number nine, we have the imaginary friend. This legend states that Clifford isn't real. It's just Emily Elizabeth's imaginary friend, meaning everything is in her head and all the adventures she goes on with her pal are fake, which is kind of sad when you think about it. People think that Emily Elizabeth has schizophrenia, which makes her experience realistic delusions. It's also why she imagines Clifford being a massive red dog instead of just a normal sized, normal colored dog. Now, this is just a legend, as you probably guessed, but in fact, Clifford is really named after an imaginary friend. According to the creator, Clifford was named after his wife's imaginary childhood friend with the same name, but her imaginary friend wasn't a dog. In the 8th spot, we have the banned episode. Apparently, there was once an episode of Clifford the Big Red Dog that aired that caused a lot of controversy. Parents were outraged, saying that the episode was too dark and sad for a children's show. As a result, the episode was banned and never aired again. A couple of people on Reddit claimed that as a child, they remember watching this episode. Basically, in this episode, Clifford is taken away from Emily Elizabeth and her family. Apparently, they were deemed being unfit for caring for such a big dog. They also claimed that they can't afford to feed him or look after him properly. That's when Clifford was forcibly removed from their home and placed in a zoo. Clifford, living in isolation in the zoo without Emily, shrunk back down to his normal size. Then, thankfully, he was returned back to Emily. However, parents said it was a very dark and sad episode that really upset their kids. However, there are no traces of this episode online, so it's just a legend. But I did some research and boy would it be expensive to have Clifford as a dog. It said that a dog his size could consume around 540 pounds of food daily. That means he would need to eat around 13 and a half bags of 40 pound dog food a day. If those bags cost around $18.99, then the owner could be spending around $256 per day on food alone. Then you would have the extra $300 a month for the spike in water bill to fill a kiddie pool of water for him, and an estimate of over $4,000 a year in vet bills. So. He's expensive. Moving on down the list at number seven, we have the lost episode. So this episode is way more creepy than the previous mentioned episode. Legend has it that somewhere in the depths of the internet, there's a lost episode of Clifford the Big Red Dog, and it is not child friendly at all. Apparently in this episode, it starts off normal. But then Clifford gets rabies and starts aggressively attacking people. He actually attacks and eats his two other dog friends, Cleo and T-Bone. Then he starts to attack other members of the town before trying to attack and harm Emily Elizabeth. Clifford ends up getting killed and the episode ends with Emily Elizabeth and her dad struggling to dig a big enough hole to bury Clifford. Yeah, that's extremely dark. But don't worry, it's not true. There's no such episode out there. Thankfully. And our fifth spot, we have the true story. This legend states that Clifford is actually based off of a true story. It claims that it was about a real girl named Emily Elizabeth who secretly took in a stray dog off the streets and started to look after it without anyone knowing. Apparently, she felt connected to the dog because she related to the dog's lonely feeling. Emily was often poorly looked after by her parents. But with her newfound friend, she felt loved by someone for once. Now, Clifford, of course, wasn't actually a red dog. It said that he was just a reddish brown color from being dirty because she wasn't able to wash him. Now, of course, this is false, but Emily Elizabeth is actually a real girl. It is the creator, Norman Bridwell's actual daughter with the same name. Apparently, he named the character off of his daughter as a tribute to her. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Clifford Kane. What does Clifford the Big Red Dog and Citizen Kane have in common? You wouldn't think much, but apparently it's said that they exist in the same universe. 
Let me explain. While a teacher was reading the book Clifford's First Snow Day to her class, she realized that the book contained a picture of a young boy holding a sled. The sled had the word Rosebud inscribed on it. Now, if you have seen the movie Citizen Kane, you know that Rosebud was the sled that Kane was playing with when he was taken away from his house as a child. So, could this be a tribute to the movie, or is this little boy supposed to represent Kane himself? Moving on to number four, we have King Kong. This time, this urban legend states that Clifford the Big Red Dog exists in the same universe as King Kong. I mean, okay, let's look at the facts. Kongs are super tall, ape-like creatures. Clifford is a super tall dog. Maybe they both exist during a time where animals can grow to extraordinary heights. So in the 2005 version of King Kong directed by Peter Jackson, the ape is said to be around 25 feet tall. Well, guess what? Clifford is also said to be around 20 feet tall. Then in the movie Kong Skull Island, we see other big animals residing on Skull Island. So maybe that can explain Clifford's height. In reality, the creator made Clifford that big because as a young boy, he always wished he could have a dog that he could ride like a pony. Also, when he was sharing ideas with his wife, he said maybe the dog's name should be Tiny, and his wife told him that it was too boring. From there, the big red dog was born. In our third spot, we have the resurrected dog. So here's another made up origin story of Clifford. Legend has it that Emily Elizabeth and her family used to have a normal Labrador retriever named Clifford. Unfortunately, the dog passed away of old age and it left the family heartbroken. That's when Emily decided to look up how to resurrect dead animals. She ended up performing a resurrection on her dog, but it went wrong resulting in Clifford being huge and red. It is theorized that he turned red from Emily's blood sacrifice, but there's no explanation for his height. This also explains how the family can afford to feed and house Clifford. It's because he technically is dead, so they don't have to worry about vet bills anymore or feeding him. Moving on to number two, we have the Big Red Blood Dog. This urban legend states that Clifford is red because the creator used his own blood to paint Clifford. It's said that he was so desperate to finish his first version of the book, but he ran out of paint. That's when he decided to mix his blood in with the paint to finish the painting. Yes, that's creepy. But thankfully, not real. The real reason behind why Norman decided to make Clifford red is as simple as this. He stated that, and I quote, it was red because I happened to have red paint on the drawing table that night. So, sorry guys, it's not as spooky as you all hoped. And in our number one spot, we have Clifford the Big Dead Dog. There are tons of Clifford the Big Red Dog books out there that children just love to read. But this next urban legend is about a boy who discovers a much darker version of the book. So this boy states that his sister was a huge fan of Clifford and had most of the books. It was her birthday coming up and he wanted to surprise her with a book. He talked to his nan about it and she told him that his aunt was a children's book author who actually wrote a book that was inspired by Clifford the Big Red Dog. She gave him the book and he was going to give this one to his sister for her birthday. However, what he didn't know was that while writing this version of the book, his aunt went a little crazy. So when he opened up the book to give it a read, it was very disturbing. He claims that the whole story was about Clifford dying. It had images of him dead, surrounded by his saddened owner and friends. He kept reading and at page 12, there was a realistic image of a dog's body cut open. But it wasn't of Clifford. It was a photo of his own dog that ran away two years prior. The final page of the book read, Clifford the Big Dead Dog in blood colored writing. Woo! So uh, safe to say that his sister did not receive that book as a present. Starting off this countdown, we have the blank screen. Legend goes that back in the early 2000s, a bunch of kids exhibited some weird behavior. Parents reported that their kids would just sit in front of a blank TV screen and claim that they were watching Clifford the Big Red Dog. Then after their show was done, they would start acting weird, like they would try to harm their parents or themselves, claiming that Clifford told them to do it. One kid cut off her hair, another young boy tried to harm himself. In fact, the boy said that if he didn't do as Clifford told him to, then he was going to kill him in his sleep. To this day, they don't know what made the kids do this. I mean, they were literally staring at their TV screens that weren't even turned on. Maybe Clifford was the name of a ghost that was possessing these kids. Who knows? In our ninth spot, we have the scientists. 
Legend goes that Clifford was born as a result of a science experiment that went wrong. According to the legend, Emily Elizabeth's parents were scientists that would do illegal testings on animals in their secret lab. They started off experimenting on rats and other rodents, but eventually they started to do experiments on cats and dogs. Clifford was the first ever dog that they tried to do an experiment on. And Emily Elizabeth, as a huge dog lover, was super upset that her parents were doing such unethical testings. As a result, she went to the lab and turned off the power supply. This was right when Clifford was undergoing some sort of treatment, and it stopped it halfway through. As a result, it caused a mutation in his DNA, and that's why he turned red and grew so big. In our eighth spot, we have the SCP. There's a legend out there that suggests that Clifford is an escaped SCP. Yeah, you heard me correctly. And he's apparently a super dangerous one, too. So this legend states that Clifford was once contained by the SCP Foundation. He is said to be a deadly, shape-shifting creature. One day, a guard slipped up and released Clifford. Clifford then shapeshifted into a guard and walked right out of the facility. Now, his main plan was to destroy the world by shapeshifting into some big creature. However, Clifford can only shapeshift into something that he is currently with. So he can't just shapeshift into this, like, giant mutant creature. It has to be something that he's physically next to. The next form he took was of a dog, which happened to be Emily Elizabeth's dog. It was said that his weakness was love. So Emily Elizabeth managed to successfully contain a deadly SCP with her love. <laughs> That's a funny legend, I like that one. In our seventh spot, we have the addiction. Apparently back in the early 2000s, there were several problematic Clifford episodes that were aired. Now, you would assume that they were problematic because of the content being shown, but this wasn't the case at all. In fact, the episodes themselves were completely harmless. However, it had a weird effect on the young viewers. Apparently, tons of parents reported that their kids were eerily addicted to the show. So much so that they became super violent and hysterical if the parents didn't let them watch the show. Tons of children had developed an unhealthy obsession with the show. As a result, they had to stop airing the show for a couple of years. When everything had cooled down, the show was brought back to air, and everything was fine. So parents still don't know to this day how or why this happened to their child. Making our way down the list, number six, we have the chainmail. Ah, yes, chainmail, gotta love those, said no one ever. Now this one is quite disturbing. For quite some time, a chainmail was being sent around containing a picture of an evil Clifford. Clifford was shown to have sharp teeth and was bleeding from his eyes. The chainmail basically said that if you don't send this to 10 friends, then Clifford would come to your house at night and kill your dog. The only ones safe from this chainmail are those named Emily. So for all you Emilys out there, lucky you, you guys are all safe, and evil Clifford's got your back. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cursed image. This next legend began several years ago when people started to believe that Clifford was red because he was actually a demon. And apparently there's a picture out there that shows Clifford in his true demon form. But you never want to see this image, for it is said to be extremely cursed. If you happen to see this picture, then you will suffer from bad luck until the day you die. One person who has reportedly seen this picture claims that it's a picture of Clifford looking into the mirror. In the mirror's reflection, you see a black, humanoid-looking demon with sharp claws, teeth, and blood dripping from its mouth. That's what the demon that is possessing Clifford looks like. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you don't go around trying to find this image online unless you want to be cursed for life. Moving on to number four, we have the lost episode. Legend goes that a 15-year-old girl named Kelly ordered a VHS tape of Clifford off of eBay. The VHS was titled, Clifford the Big Red Dog, Gross Objects. She had never heard of this episode, but she was a huge fan of the show, so she ordered it as a little gift to herself. This episode was apparently just filled with disturbing and gross things. Like, for example, in one scene, you see Emily Elizabeth taking a shower, but she washes herself with cooking fat and potato chips. Then other really messed up things are said to happen. Apparently the episode was so graphic and disturbing that it was reported to PBS Kids. Turns out that this episode never even aired, and it was never supposed to. It just ended up being leaked. In our third spot, we have The Lost Episode Part 2. There are just so many lost episodes out there, and this is another pretty creepy one. Basically, in this episode, the government seizes Clifford and starts to run illegal experiments on him. 
They believe that he is not a typical dog, but an alien dog or some sort of mutated species. Either way, he was deemed unsafe and taken away from Emily Elizabeth and her family. Now, in order to make sure that the word of this big dog never spread to neighboring towns, the government ended up killing Emily Elizabeth and all the people who have ever seen or encountered Clifford. They needed him to remain a government secret. The episode ends with Clifford dying after finding out that Emily Elizabeth was killed. Honestly, people could probably make that into some sort of sci-fi movie. In our second spot, we have the Bloody Dog. Legend goes that there was once a girl named Sally that was obsessed with Clifford. And I mean obsessed. She owned tons of Clifford plushies, her favorite color was red, and she would always watch the show. On top of that, she would dress up and act like Emily Elizabeth. Now, this is all kind of cute, except for one day, she went a little too far. She was upset that her dog wasn't like Clifford. He wasn't red, he wasn't big, and he couldn't talk. As a result, she killed her dog and used his blood to paint him red. Then she cut him open and stuffed him so that he appeared to look bigger. And in our number one spot, we have the themed party. Man, I miss being a little kid, like going to friends' birthday parties. They were so much fun with like pinatas and loot bags. Man, the good old days. I definitely miss that. Now, what does this have to do with Clifford? Well, legend goes that the parents of one little girl threw her a Clifford-themed birthday party. In fact, they even hired an actor that showed up wearing a Clifford mascot costume. This is when it started to take a dark turn. The Clifford mascot looked quite disturbing. It was covered in dirt and stains. It didn't look like a professional costume at all. But nonetheless, the kids were having fun and decided to play hide and seek with Clifford. While the kids were occupied, the mother phoned the company to complain about the mascot. When she got them on the phone, they apologized saying that he was going to be late. He was still an hour away, meaning that the Clifford mascot in her house was an intruder. Starting us off at number 10 is the runaway Soviet space dog. Now, one fan theory on Reddit claims that Scooby-Doo is actually a Soviet space dog. The show was set in the 60s, where the space race between the US and Soviet Union was at its peak. Both countries wanted so badly to be the first ones achieving any space-related feat, and they mean the Soviets put a dog on a rocket already and shot it into space, so what's to say that Scooby-Doo wasn't one of those Soviet dogs? The theory goes on to say Scooby could have run away from the Soviets' classified space dog program. The program most likely bred highly intelligent puppies that could understand radio commands and operate satellites, but Scooby was a rare one since he could talk. One of the scientists working in the program got super attached to Scooby and knowing he would die if he was sent to space, decided to defect the US and take Scooby with him. After the scientist died, Scooby found a new home with the gang, but it makes sense that the show is always like, Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? Because the Soviets are still looking for their star pup. Coming in at number 9 is the Scooby Draft. I, I truly believe Scooby-Doo will go down as one of the best cartoons in cartoon history, like hands down. An also unpopular opinion, but Scooby himself was my least favorite character and I'm not afraid to admit that, come for me. Anyway, this theory explores the fact that we never get told why a group of teenagers and a dog are traveling around the country in a van. The producers were probably like, don't worry about it, no one's gonna care, and everyone's like, um, hello. Either way, this theory claims that because the show premiered in 1969 and the Vietnam War was at its peak at that time, the gang was actually driving to Canada to avoid being drafted. The theory goes on to say that Fred was drafted, but since he had all the mystery solving skills and zero combative skills, he knew he'd most likely die on the field, so he decided to run away with his fiance Daphne. Since Velma is an activist for the war to stop, she went along with them as well, and Shaggy is clearly a hippie who's not going to go to war anytime soon, so he joined the gang as well. At number 8 we have The Cult. I never thought I would see the day when people thought the gang, the OG mystery gang that captured our hearts, was a cult. Let's break it down. We obviously have the handsome frontman Fred, Velma the brainy one, Daffy the pretty fashionable one that is low-key brainwashed by Fred, and Shaggy who has conversations with the dog. I mean, they could be an interesting group of friends or they could be a cult. Fred is obviously the cult leader that recruits groupies like Daphne who will blindly follow him off a cliff if they have to. The group needs Velma since she's a genius, making her a huge asset. Shaggy is most likely addicted to some kind of drug that makes him think he can talk to dogs, but it also makes him the one that's most likely to do the group's dirty work in order to get his next fix. 
filling our number seven slot is Scooby Dooby Depression. Aside from their slang, all the flowers on the mystery machine, and even the gang's clothing, you can tell the show was set in the 60s. And the theory claims that it was set during one of the worst economic depressions ever. And if you think about it long enough, it really makes sense. In the show, everything is either falling apart or abandoned, hotels are empty, and theme parks are ruined. Every villain they catch is actually someone who would normally be quite respected, like a teacher or historian or scientist, but they've just fallen on hard times and have turned to petty crime in this dark period of life. And no, no, I definitely did not forget about the gang. You'd think they were just hippies out looking for adventure, but really they're in like their late teens, early 20s, not interested in getting proper jobs. They move around all the time because there are no jobs available no matter where they go. They wear the same clothes every day. Do they shower or pay for petrol? No one really knows. Now, at number six are Scooby Snacks. I'm, I'm pretty sure if Scooby-Doo was given an ultimatum of 40 boxes of Scooby Snacks on one side or saving his entire gang, he would choose the former. He just loves them way too much. Well, according to this theory, the treat can alter your genetic code, which explains why Scooby-Doo, scooby Dum, and Scrappy-Doo can not only talk, but perform stunts that are utterly ridiculous. As for humans, the only person eating the snacks is Shaggy, and the only effect we seem to see that it has is boosting his metabolism 10 Fold. He can literally down those mile high sandwiches and still be skinnier than every insta ho out there. Make it make sense. Is he on that fit tea, skinny tea vibe? Who knows? He's just on that Scooby Snack vibe. Coming in at number five are the real heroes. In every episode without fail, when things start going to shit and getting scary, Scooby and Shaggy are always the ones to run away. And then somehow in an accidental fashion, they end up being the ones capturing the villain in the end through no intention of their own. But according to this fan theory, Shaggy and Scooby are both actors who pretend to be terrified of monsters and ghosts. They're faking all of it in order to draw the monsters out because they want to be seen as easy targets. That way the gang can trap the villain since they'll be too busy seeking out the other two. And all this makes so much sense, that's literally why Fred always pairs Shaggy and Scooby up together when they split up. Why would these two even be in the gang if they were genuinely that terrified of these monsters? And how, after years of investigating, would they still be scared shitless? Because they're actors, that's what we do. At number four is the designated driver. Yes, we've all felt the tragedy on a night out when you're the DD and all your friends are getting drunk, having fun, and you're just there twiddling your thumbs and making conversation with a plate of fries in front of you shocking. Now in the show, Fred is always the de facto driver, but just look at him. This preppy, clean-shaven kid would not own a lime green van covered in flowers, meaning the van isn't his. It belongs to a hippie, most likely Shaggy, and as many theories point out, Shaggy is a pothead. So either Shaggy lost his license for driving under the influence, or Fred is worried he'll make the gang crash, so he never lets him drive. Yes, never drive and smoke, people. Never drive and smoke. No matter how much of a functional stoner you are, don't do it. Filling on number three slot is the Captain America link. Who the hell would have thought that Scooby-Doo would have any link to Marvel whatsoever? But I mean, you learn something new every day, don't you? Now, this theory shares that Shaggy's real name is Norville Rogers and Captain America's name is Steve Rogers. So right now, the two share the same last name. In the movie Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Falcon is out on a morning run when he claims that Steve can run 13 miles in 30 minutes. If you do the maths, that's around 26 miles per hour. Now, if we go back to Scooby-Doo, we see that Shaggy can almost always keep pace with Scooby when they're running. Scooby's a great Dane and those breeds can run up to 30 miles per hour, meaning Shaggy runs at superhuman speed for a supposed pothead. So it could be quite possible that he is in fact Captain America's son. Now, at number two is the love affair. You guys are lying if you say that Fred and Daphne were not your original OTP. And if you're unaware, OTP means one true pairing, the two characters that were truly meant to be together, your favorite duo in a fandom, if you will. Now, we know these two are together. The show implies it way too many times. Shaggy is clearly too obsessed with Scooby to think about a romance. That bromance is enough for him. And that leaves sweet Velma. This theory claims that Velma was actually a closeted lesbian who had been in love with Daphne from the minute she saw her. But she could never say anything to her because she knew she loved Fred and the feelings would not be reciprocated and it would tear the gang apart. So instead, she just lived with the fact that she could never get the woman she loved. Velma could have easily left the gang, but that would have meant not seeing Daphne ever again and that's something she couldn't cope with. My heart will go on. What would their stand name be? Vafni. Delma. It's not ringing a, it's not, it's not feeling nice in my mouth. 
And finally, at number one is Scrappy Doo. It doesn't matter which episode it was, Scrappy Doo always annoyed the sh out of me. How can something be so small and filled with testosterone and be that annoying? <laughs> Actually, it's, it's quite possible I've met my fair share of guys who are like that. <laughs> Lol. Now, either way, this theory claims that the gang wasn't fond of Scrappy either. He was arrogant and conceited and they eventually left him behind. After they ditch him, he isn't seen for years because he's busy trying to figure out how to gain revenge on the gang for casting him away. By 2002, Scrappy makes a mechanical version of Emil, the owner of Spooky Island, and impersonates him in order to get Scooby's protoplasm. But his plan is foiled by those meddling kids and he's sent to jail, but that is not the end of Scrappy-Doo, my folks. He ends up escaping and creates clones of Scooby and the whole gang and sends them to kill the OG gang and take over their lives. They succeed and somehow no one notices that they're not the original crew.